Good morning. I'm Paul Bowden. I'm an environment partner at Freshfields and head of the firm's low carbon energy group. This week's news is that legally binding agreement to replace Kyoto in 2012 isn't going to be struck when the world's leaders meet in Copenhagen. But deal or no deal, the UK's commitment to reduce carbon emissions is a given. The real question is, how far are we able to reduce emissions? The answer to that question lies in our ability not just to commercialise new carbon reduction technologies, but also to build the projects necessary to decarbonise our industry and infrastructure. It's quite clear to anyone operating in this sector that our old planning system isn't working for major infrastructure development. It isn't working for business and investors. And it isn't working for the public whose voice needs to be heard in the planning process. No one wants planning decisions to be rushed or consents granted on the nod. But we all expect a system that works on timescales that are human and not geological. With ten new nuclear power plants on the cards and a transmission network that needs modernising and making smart, we can't afford to go the same route as with the upgrade of the North Yorkshire power line, which took six years to decide on, or Heathrow Terminal 5, which, which took even longer. The need to address this issue of, as part of the UK's ambitious climate change agenda has been recognised. An overhaul to the planning system for major projects is well underway. The government's just released for consultation a suite of national policy statements on major energy developments. Together they provide a framework. It's a framework for us to take strategic, national and long-term views of infrastructure planning. The national policy statements will give us predictability. The new system will improve efficiency by allowing the approval of major projects in a single consent from a single assessment body. A new independent infrastructure planning commission opened its doors last month. Once these national policy statements are finalised, this commission will have powers to assess a wide range of projects using new streamlined procedures. These new procedures are not without challenge for energy and infrastructure development. Many of the efficiencies are gained through front-loading public consultation and through detailed project requirements. The onus is on developers to identify and mitigate the impacts of their developments from the start and to engage with stakeholders at the very earliest stages of every project. A new level of diligence and preparation is going to be needed to achieve compliance. But the benefits in project quality, stakeholder acceptance and ease of assessment should justify the effort required. The UK's Low Carbon Transition Plan, it was released this summer, places the energy and infrastructure development industries at the heart of our national strategy to reduce carbon emissions. Whatever happens in Copenhagen, we're excited about the prospect of assisting industry to play its essential part and to deliver the projects that will help the UK achieve its ambitious climate change agenda. We hope that our guide to the new UK planning regime will be a useful insight into how this system will work. Thank you for listening.